So we gon' get it in. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Put in the work. Tunnel vision never in reverse. My hockey's move at light speed. You can't stop what you don't see. I can do this in my sleep. Wake up and write down what I see. One time for the father, cause he right on time. One time for the bruise on the front line. They thought they buried us. Then it rained on us. Rose out of concrete, you knew that sun was shine. I got a sword on me. Perilous times. Still in the dizzy after kids they keep me at a side. Never trust your enemy, I know they tell it lies. You got blood on your hands, will he let it slide? Midnight is approaching, who won't burn first? Coming through these profits to my mom's hurts. I ain't talking money, I'm talking no oracles. Jose and three and five, you know how the story go. Yeah, and if you don't, then you ought to know. When it slows back to back, I think I'm on the road. Light speed, the obvious with me, and they all don't go. Scriptures open, they can tell you what you want to know. And we move at light speed. Last of a dime breed. My hockey's move at light speed. Long as I'm living.
Timothy 2 and 15. It's the book of 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what are we about to do? Rightly divide the word of truth. So we're about to rightly divide the word of truth. How do we do that? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, that's how we get the understanding of how to read the Bible. Okay, so let's start with, uh, let's open up with Psalms 32, Psalms 33 and verse 12. Psalms 33 and verse 12. Let's start there. The book of Psalms chapter 33 and verse 12. Uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It says, blessed is the nation whose whose God is the Lord. What nation is that? The nation of Israel. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Okay? We are God's chosen people. That's Read it right. again. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Whose God is the Lord. Come on. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And this says, and the people who? Whom he hath chosen. Who, who, whom he hath chosen, okay? He chose a specific people to be his chosen people, okay? Read that again, and what? 
And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. For his own inheritance, okay? So that goes into who? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Okay? From there, give me uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto who? All Israel. No, unto the whole world. All Israel. All Israel. Moses spake the words in Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy to who? All Israel. Uh huh. On this side, Jordan in the wilderness. On this side, Jordan in the wilderness. Coming from where? Out of Egypt. So now where are, where are the Israelites? They in the wilderness. And Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. Okay, give me Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Let's start at verse 6. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So now remember, Moses speaking to the children of Israel, right? He says, for what? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. It says, for thou, meaning you, Israel, are an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy meaning set apart, right? right, right. Come on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. He has what? Chosen thee. He has chosen thee. Come on. To be a special people unto himself. So if the Israelites are special, then that means what? Nobody else is special to God. That's right. Okay. Understand that. The Bible says that the Israelites are a special people unto God himself. Come on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above who? All people. Above all people. Did it say some people? All people. Did it, does the Bible say we three-fifths of a man? Above all people uh -huh. that are upon the face of the earth. So the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, God says that we are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's right. Okay, we've been taught that we are below the white man. That's we are right. below the, the uh, Arab man, the Chinese man, okay, the East Indian man. No, we are above all people. The Most High God says that, right? So what the, if, if the Most High God says that the children of Israel are above all people, then what does that make us? His chosen. That's right. Okay? So if to, in today's term, if, if, if one person would say, well, my race is above your race, you would say that's a racist statement. That's right. Right? <laughs> but we just read in the Bible that God says that the Israelites are above all people. That's so right. what does that make God? A racist. That's right. Because he loves his chosen people. Bring it up. Read on. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. Now, he, he said he didn't choose us because we are... Uh, Above, I mean, more in number than any nation, right? Come on. For ye were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you. Because what? But because the Lord loved you. Because the Lord loved you, Israel. Come on. And because he would keep his oath which he has sworn unto your fathers. Uh huh. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. Them are our fathers. Read. Has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand uh -huh. and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? You see, so the Lord destroyed a whole nation just for the children of Israel, okay, to redeem us out of captivity, That's right. okay? So what I'm bringing out here today is that we are that peculiar nation that is to be set apart, That's right. okay? The Lord says he holy, so we got to be holy. Okay, give me uh, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Remember, this is this is the Holy Bible. We read the Bible today. That's right. Okay, this is what the Bible says. This ain't my words. We just read, thus saith the Lord. That's right. Read what you got. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2. Come on. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Didn't we just read that? 
That's right. Why is the Lord repeating itself? <laughs> okay, he says, for thou art in holy people. Come on. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people. A who? A peculiar people. A peculiar people. Come on. Unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. You see, so the Lord, not only does he say it in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, he repeats himself again with different words. This time he says you are a peculiar people. That's right. Okay. Now give me wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 19 and 6. Let's go a little further with this peculiar. Okay. Let's go a little further with this uh, peculiar thing. Right. The Lord says we are a peculiar nation. Watch this. We are to be set apart. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, and let me see, verse 6. 19 and 6. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, and verse 6. Uh -huh. For the whole creature is his proper kind, was fashioned again anew. Fashioned again anew, right? The Israelites, come on. Serving the peculiar commandments. What are we doing? Serving the peculiar commandments. Serving the peculiar commandments, come on. That were given unto them. That were given unto Israel. We're going to read that, come on. That thy children might be kept without hurt. Right, because if we keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, we stay out of the pathway of God's judgment. That's right. Okay? Now, give me the definition of peculiar and the Miriam. I want the Miriam definition. Let's read, in a, let's read the definition of what it means to be peculiar. Go to the Miriam. Scroll up. Right there. And give me that first one, and then I want the second one. First and second. The definition of peculiar, uh -huh. characteristic of only one person. Only one person. Group. A group. Or thing. Or thing, right? So it says the characteristic, being peculiar means it's a characteristic of one person, group, or thing, right? Read the uh, uh, two. Different from the usual or normal. What does peculiar mean? Different from the usual or normal. So when the Most High God says that the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, today are peculiar, it means that what? They we are different from, from the, the usual or normal. So we not to be uh, like the other nations. That's right. We are set apart, right? We different from the usual or the normal. That's right. Okay? The Most High God has chosen thee to be a peculiar people, a special people. That's right. So we are a special people. Are we to be like all other nations? No. Okay. No. The Bible says the Israelites are the salt of the earth. Okay, we give the earth flavor. Everything that we do, other nations mimic. That's right. Okay, everybody want to do it with what we do. We the trendsetters on the earth. Okay, that's how the Lord uh, fashioned us, right? Now give me Leviticus 20 and 26. Because we keep reading about being holy, peculiar, special. Let's read this. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 26. Let's read what it means to be holy. And ye shall be holy unto me. The Bible says, the Lord says what? Ye shall be holy unto me. You shall be holy, meaning Israel. You shall be holy unto me. Come on. For I, the Lord, am holy uh -huh. and have severed you from other people. What did the Lord do? Severed you from other people uh -huh. that ye should be mine. You see that? He said, I have severed you from other people that you should be mine. What is? What happens when you sever something, right? You cut it, right? Meaning it, it was a part of something, but now it's not. Okay? So the Lord says he has severed us, right? Because... He's holy, so now the Israelites have to be holy, okay? So when the Bible says that we have to be set apart, we are peculiar, we are special, we are not to partake in what the other nations do. That's right. Okay? He gave us laws to live by in the Bible. 
And if we are if we are calling ourselves God's chosen people, then we have to live by those laws. That's right. Right? They're not options. That's why they call commandments. That's right. Okay? You are commanded to live by these laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay? Now let's get uh 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're gonna start at verse 13. Because our people like to, they love to copy what other nations do. They love to be like the white man, the white woman, right? But <laughs> in all actuality, they copy what we do. That's right. So why do you want to mimic somebody that want to mimic you? That don't even make sense. <laughs> Give me 1 Peter uh, 1 and 13. Start there. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 13. Wherefore? Gird up the loins of your mind. Uh -huh. Be sober. So gird up the loins of your minds, Israel, right, with the laws of God, okay? Gird up your mind with the laws of God. It says, be sober, come on, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. Read on. As obedient children. What are we supposed to be? As obedient children. Obedient children to God's laws. That's how you reverence the Father. That's how you show respect to the Heavenly Father. We have to be obedient to what the Bible says. Come on. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. In your what? In your ignorance. Because some of you might not know the laws that's in the Bible. Right? So the Bible says you're not supposed to be fashioning yourselves after the lust. Your former lust in your ignorance. Okay? So today... You're going to be learning laws that you got to keep, right? Because we are not to be like how we was taught to be, right? We was taught to be, you know, uh, lawbreakers, evil, hating your own people. That's right. Right? Uh, commend fornication, eating pork and shrimp, crab, lobster. Those are laws that you are breaking in the Bible that was only given to the nation of Israel. That's right. Okay? Read on. But as he which have called you is holy. He that have called you is holy. God, he called us to be holy, set apart. So be ye holy uh -huh. in all manner of conversation. He says, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Come on. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. He says, be ye holy for I am holy. Okay, Peter is just reiterating what Moses said in Deuteronomy. That's right. Okay, be ye holy because the Most High God is holy. Come on. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work. He judges what? According to every man's work. So the Lord says he judges you according to your works. Okay, he has respect. He, it says he has what? Without respects of person, judge it according to every man's work. Uh -huh. Past the time of your sojourning here in fear. So it says we're supposed to pass the time of your sojourning in here in America in fear. Let me get the definition of sojourn. What does it mean to be a sojourn? Right? We got to know what these words mean. And I'm going to read to you in the Bible that the Lord said when he says that he has uh, no respect of persons. I'm going to show you what that means as well. Yeah, right there. The definition of sojourn, uh -huh. a temporary stay. What is it? A temporary stay. Now, the word sojourn means the, a temporary stay. This is not our rest. This is not our home. That's right. This is not the land of the free, the home of the brave. This ain't the kingdom. That's right. Okay. So read uh, 1 Peter 17 again. 1 Peter 1 and 17. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judging according to every man's work, pass the time of your short journey here in fear. You see? So it said, pass the time of your sojourning here in America, okay? In fear, meaning what? Fearing of God, his judgments. That's right. You keep his commandments because you fear his judgments. That's right. Now, it said respect the persons. Let me get that in uh, Exodus 2 and 25. 
Let me show you about that uh, that respect of persons. Because a lot of people will say, well, the Most High has no respect of person to nobody. But let's read what the Bible says. Uh huh. Book of Exodus, chapter 2, and verse 25. Uh -huh. And God looked upon the children of Israel. He looked upon who? The children of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Come on. And God had respect unto them. He had what? Respect unto them. Oh, so he does have respect for the children of Israel. That's right. Okay, let's go back to the New Testament. 1 Peter 1 and 18 now. Book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and verse 18. Uh -huh. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, uh -huh. as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers. Read on. But with the precious blood of Christ. We were redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Come on. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Without blemish or spot, Christ was. He was sinless, right? He was without sin. Come on. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, uh -huh. but was manifest in these last times for you. For who? For you. For you. So you know what happens when people read that? They say for you, meaning anybody that's reading the Bible, that's you. <laughs> no. No, that you is not all nations. That's right. Now, let's prove that. Jump to verse 1. 1 Peter 1 and 1. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's see who, Paul, who Peter was writing this book to. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, uh, Galatia, Cap Cappadocia, Cap Cappadocia, Cappadocia. Asia and, and Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh -huh. Elect. A who? Elect. Who? Elect. Come on. According to the foreknowledge of the God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, uh -huh. unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Read. grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, the what I want out of there is the elect. Okay? The elect. That's who... Peter is talking to, right? He's talking to the Israelites that are scattered abroad through slavery. They are God's elect. Who are the elect? Okay. That's why I said you got to read the Bible, precept upon precept, line upon line. Hear a little in the Old Testament. Hear a little in the New Testament. Let's read who God's elect are. Isaiah 45 and 4. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 4. Uh-huh. For if for Jacob my servant's sake, uh-huh, and Israel mine elect. It says who? Israel mine elect. No, all nations are the elect. Israel mine elect. The Bible says, God says, the children of Israel are the elect. That's right. Okay. Thus saith the Holy Bible. That's right. Let's go back to 1 Peter now. Okay. So now we know who. Who Peter is speaking to. He's speaking to the children of Israel. That's right. First Peter 1 and 19 again. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Uh -huh. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in this last time for you. For you Israel. That's it. Only for the children of Israel. That's who Christ came for. Okay, so if Christ came for us and we know that the most high God is set apart, Christ is set apart, meaning holy, then us, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we have to be set apart as well. That's right. Okay, we're not supposed to be taking on the, the uh, traditions of men, okay? Birthdays. That's a tradition of men. That's right. In the Bible, we read that birthdays is a sin. That's right. That's a sin according to the Bible. You never read about Israel in the Bible celebrating their birthday. Okay? Uh, Easter. Everybody just got to celebrate Easter. That's right. That's not in the Bible. That's a tradition of men. Okay? We ought to be set apart. Understand that. All of these pagan holidays that the white man has set up for you, that's what you celebrate. Because guess what? Think about this. Without the white man telling you what holiday to celebrate, 
You wouldn't have no holidays to celebrate. I'm breaking it out. He tell you when the holiday <laughs> is and what day to celebrate it on. That's right. You wouldn't have a holiday if it wasn't for the white man telling you to. That's right. Understand that. In the Bible, we have many of high holy days. That's right. Okay? This is These are the commandments that we got to keep in this Bible. Not what men says. We ought to be set apart. Okay? Now, let's get Joel 2 and 27. Let's get Joel 2 and 27. It's the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. Uh -huh. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. The Most High God said he is in the midst of Israel. Come on. And that I am the Lord your God. He says what? I am the Lord your God. He says I am the Lord your God, Israel. Come on. And none else. And who? None else. And the God of all nations. None else. And the God of all nations. It got to say that, right? None else. Come on. <laughs> and my people shall never be ashamed. So he says I am the Lord your God, Israel. That's and true. none else. And my people, Israel, shall never be ashamed. That's right. Okay? That's that's the God that we have. The other nations don't have a God. That's right. Okay? They got is white Jesus, an idol. Bring it out. Okay? You got uh so-called white man. He, 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 that's his God, Jesus, the, the false image of Christ. That's right. Right? Caesar Bourget. That's his real name. Okay? Uh, Ishmael, who they serve? Allah. Right? An uh, idol. Okay? Uh, the, the Asians, who they got? Buddha. Okay? You got the East Indian man, who they serve? Krishna. All of these other gods are idols. We got the one true living God. That's right. That's right. Okay? The God that created the heavens and earth. Now, let's get Jeremiah 31 and 1. Jeremiah 31 and 1. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 1. Come on. At the same time, saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Will I be the God of all the families of Israel? He's going to be the God of who? All the families of Israel. All the families of Israel. Come on. And they shall be my people. You see? That's in the <laughs> that doesn't change from Old the New Testament. That's right. Okay? That doesn't change. If if the Most High God says he's going to be the God of all the families, meaning all 12 tribes of Israel, okay? We just read that. He says, I am holy, therefore you shall be holy. That's right. Set apart. That's right. We are a peculiar nation, okay? Give me Isaiah 44 and 1. And we're going to read that in the New Testament too, buddy. Just because you, oh, he's standing in the Old Testament. <laughs> We're going to go to the new for you, too. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Who? It says here who? O Jacob, my servant. Uh-huh. And Israel, whom I have chosen. It says in who? And Israel, whom I have chosen. Why do we keep reading that in the Bible? <laughs> Why ain't your Christian pastor telling you who the children of Israel are? If God has a chosen people, then you in the Christian church need to know who the children of Israel are. That's right. Because that's who the kingdom is for. That's right. Okay? Give me that Revelation 21 real quick. Give me that real quick. Because if, if, if the Bible says that God's chosen people are the Israelites and the kingdom is only for Israel, then you need to know that you're an Israelite. That's right. And if your pastor not teaching that, He's not teaching, thus saith the Lord. That's right. Read what you got. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 12. Uh-huh. And had a wall great and high. Uh, a wall great and high. That's the kingdom. Come on. And had 12 gates. The kingdom got how many gates? 12 gates. No, one big pearly gate. 12 gates. Why the church teach this one big pearly gate? The Bible says the kingdom has 12 gates. Come on. And at the gates, 12 angels. And at the gates, 12 angels. Come on. And the names written thereon. And the names written on those 12 gates 
which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You understand that? That's plain. That's, That's right. easy to be understood. Okay? The Bible says that on those gates are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. That's it. That's who the Bible is for. That's, That's right. who the kingdom is for. That's right. Okay, give me Acts 1 and 6. Let's prove that a little further. I'm veering off, but we got to understand that who this kingdom is for. And if you want to get that kingdom, you got to repent and keep these commandments and the faith in Christ. Give me Acts 1 and 6. It's the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh-huh. When they therefore were come together. The disciples came together, right? They asked of him, saying. They asked Christ, saying what? Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Why did they understand that the kingdom? Why did they say, will you restore again? The word restore means to give back to something. That's right. So he says, read it again. When they therefore were come together, uh -huh. they asked of him, saying, what did, what did the disciples say to Christ? Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? That's who the kingdom was always for. It was only for Israel. That's right. That's it. Okay? The disciples understood that. And Christ, why Christ is saying, no, the kingdom is for all nations. Bring it out. Why you didn't say that? Okay, because that's not in the Bible. That's right. Okay, salvation is only for the twelve tribes. That's right. That's why on the on the gates is the twelve is the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Bring it up. That's it. Okay, give me Acts five. Acts five. You know what I want. Give me Acts five and uh, twenty nine. Start there. Okay. Book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. We ought to obey God. With the words in this Bible, that's what we ought to obey. That's right. Okay? We ought to obey God rather than men. Your pastor ain't teaching, thus said the Lord, you obeying a false prophet. That's right. Understand that. Read. The God of our fathers. The God of who? Our fathers. He said the God of our fathers. That's possessive. See, people don't, they just read past these words. That's right. No, it says, Peter said the God of our fathers, the 12 tribes. That's right. Okay, come on. Raise up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Uh-huh. Him have God exalted with his right hand. To be a prince and savior. So he exalted Christ to be a prince and a savior. Come on. For to give repentance to Israel. To give repentance to who? Israel. To all nations. Israel. Come on. And forgiveness of sins. You see that? <laughs> why Why is that in the Bible? Why, why does the Bible say that Christ only died to give repentance to the children of Israel? That's right. And forgiveness of sins. Why did I say repentance to all nations? Because that's not who Christ came and died for. That's right. Matthew 15, 24. Matthew 15, 24. See? Our people don't know this Bible. That's why you that's why Christ said you gotta be born again. Right? You gotta be taught all over again. Because through slavery, our people have been destroyed. That's right. Okay, they don't know who they are in this Bible. That's why y'all hate each other so much, because you don't know that the brother sitting next to you is a king. That's right. The sister sitting next to you that you're walking past every day, that's an Israelite princess. That's right. But it's so easy for our people to hate each other, because they don't know who they are in this Bible. Read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I said what? I am not sent him. God did not send him. In order for him to be sent, somebody had to send him. Right? He says, I am not sent, but who? Unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's it. That's who Christ was sent for. Okay? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's it. Okay? Now, let's get, uh, let me see. Did we get Isaiah 43? Let's go. Get that. Isaiah 43. And 
I want verse 1. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 43 and verse 1. Uh -huh. But now thus said the Lord that's tr that created thee. That created thee. The Lord that created the Israelites. Read. Oh, Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Jacob is the forefather of of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why we keep reading Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. He is the forefather, the patriarch of the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And he that formed thee, uh -huh. O Israel. O Israel, read. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Uh -huh. I have called thee by thy name. Uh -huh. Thou art mine. He says, thou art mine, Israel. That's it. All nations is not God's chosen people. That's right. Okay, understand that. So, understanding that, we're going to get a little further into being set apart and what that actually means. But right now, I'm just showing you in the Bible that who are God's chosen people, right? Who did Christ come to die for? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's it. That's right. Okay, and knowing that, we got to come out of the way that we've been taught. All of that is traditions of men, Okay. Let's get Matthew 1. Let's go back to the New Testament. Matthew 1 and 16. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 16. Come on. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary. Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary. Come on. Of whom was born Jesus. Of whom was born Jesus. Who is called Christ. Okay, so no... <laughs> Jesus was immaculately born. That's right. Okay? It says, Joseph and Mary created Jesus. That's right. Through what? Sex. That's Sperm. Right. That's right. Understand that. Ain't no immaculate conception in the Bible. Give me uh, verse 21 now. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. She, meaning Mary, through Joseph. By them two having sex... She going to bring forth a son. Come on. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh-huh. For he shall save his people. He shall what? Save his people. He's going to save his people. Come on. From their sins. From their sins. Possessive words. He's going to save his people from their sins. Why? Because the laws were only given to the Israelites. That's right. Okay. Jump, uh... Now, give me Isaiah 9. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 9. Then we're going to come back to Matthew. Isaiah 9 and 6. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. Watch this. For, to, for unto us a child is born. A child is born unto us. Come on. Unto us a son is given. Mm-hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government is going to be upon this son that is born. Right? Come on. And his name shall be called Wonderful. His name, one of his names is going to be called Wonderful. Notice that when we read these words, is caps on these words. That's right. Showing you that is what? Importance. Right? It says one of his names he's going to be called is Wonderful. Come on. Counselor. Counselor. He's going to be called Counselor. Come on. The Mighty God. He's going to be called the Mighty God. Come on. The Everlasting Father. He's going to be called the Everlasting Father. Come on. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. He has many names, right? Watch this. Of the increase of the government and peace, there shall be no end. It says of the increase of his government... And peace shall there be no end. Come on. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it to and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Even forever. Come on. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see? So this is going into who? Jesus the Christ. That's right. This is going into Jesus the Christ. Now, remember it said that uh, the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, right? Verse 6 also said, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, okay? Now, let's go back to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew. This time I want chapter 2 and verse 6. It's 
It's the book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah. In the land of Judah, come on. Art not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee. For out of thee, from out of Judah, come on. Shall come a governor. A who? A governor. A governor. So if the government <laughs> is going to be upon his shoulders, who is the governor then? Christ is talking about Christ. That's right. Read it again. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah mm -hmm. are not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh-huh. For out of thee, for out of thee, come on, shall come a governor. That's Christ. That shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule who? My people Israel. You see? So that's why we read in Matthew 1 and uh, 21, right? That Christ is going to say his people. Who is his people? We just read it. He going to come to governor. He going to be a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. That's right. Okay. Israel. That's who God's people is, right? Knowing that we God's chosen people, now we got to start living differently. Now we got to start changing. Now we can't be, you know, the, the nigga that we used to be. That's right. right. Now we got to change our mindset. Okay, that's why the Bible says come out of her because we've been taught lies our whole life. Okay, and that's what we've been living. Nothing but a life of lies. Okay, a life of evil, a life of wickedness. So the Bible says that we are a peculiar people, special unto the Lord. Okay, we're not, a, we're not below the nations. We are above. That's right. Right, right now we're at the bottom because we broke God's commandments. And we serving our punishment right now, okay? But understand, when 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 Christ come back with the angels, those that repent and keep the commandments as an Israelite, that's right, and endure to the end, keep the faith in Christ. The kingdom is for you. That's right. The kingdom is for you, but you gotta walk the kingdom, right? It don't come by observation, like the Bible says. So now, let's get uh, John, Saint John. 17. St. John chapter 17. And uh, verse 9. Let's start there. St. John chapter 17 and verse 9. Watch what Christ says. It's the book of John chapter 17 and verse 9. This red letters. Read this. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Read that again. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, uh -huh. but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. The Bible says, Christ says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. You understand that? That's right. Who did, who, we just read who Christ coming to govern. It says Israel. That's who we come to govern. So the people that he's praying for, he says, I pray for them. Not the world. Okay? Them meaning who? The Israelites. That's right. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's so called right. today. Okay? Read that again. That's a heavy verse. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So John 3.16 is dead. Ooh. We all think John 3.16 mean God so loved the world. But if God loved the world, wouldn't he send Christ to pray for the world? That's right. Right? Wouldn't he, wouldn't he do that? But Christ said out of his own mouth that I pray for them, I pray not for the world. Okay? But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Who was given to Christ? We just read it in Matthew 2 and 6. Right? Israel. The That's Israelites. Right. That's it. Read on. And all mine are thine. Uh -huh. And thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. Read on. And now I am no more in the world. So Christ said, now I am no more in the world. Come on. But these are in the world. Uh-huh. And I come to thee. Read. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. You see, we are supposed to be on one accord. But the Christ said they need to be on one even as me and the Father is on one. That's right. Okay? So if Christ wasn't a part of the world, then we, should, we shouldn't be either. That's right. 
Okay? Understand that Christ telling us to come out of the ways that we've been taught. That's right. Okay? Jump to verse 17. Uh, John chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Come on. Thy word is truth. What is the truth? Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. What is the word? Hold on. Give me Sirach 1 and 5. Give me Sirach 1 and 5. It's the book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The word of God most high is the foundation of uh, the fountain of wisdom. Read. And her ways are everlasting commandments. And her what? Her ways are everlasting commandments. Read that again from the top. The word of God. The who? The word of God. The word of God. Come on. Most high is the fountain of wisdom. Uh-huh. And her ways are everlasting commandments. So the word of God is the commandments. That's right. The laws, the statutes. That's right. Okay. Let's go back to John 17 now. And 17 again. Sanctify them through thy truth. Uh -huh. Thy word is truth. So the law, statutes, and commandments is the truth. That's right. Understand that. Read. As thou hast, as thou hast sent me into the world, uh -huh. even so have I also sent them into the world. Read on. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. It says what? And for their sakes I sanctify myself. Uh huh. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. You see that? <laughs> Christ said he sanctified himself, right? That we, the Israelites, might be sanctified through God's laws. That's right. That's the only way that, that our body, our temple is cleansed, that our mind is cleansed, right? Through the truth. That's right. Okay? The law, statutes, and commandments, that's what the truth is. Give me that in Psalms. You know what I want. Give me the truth. Let's get that again. Give me that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. And thy law is the truth. What's the truth? Thy law is the truth. You see that? So the laws of God is the truth. That's right. This gave you two precepts to prove that. That's Let's right. Let's go back to John 17. Read uh, 19 again. And for their sake, and for the Israelites' sakes, come on, I sanctify myself, come on, that they also might be sanctified through the truth, that they might be cleansed, sanctified meaning cleansed through God's laws. That's the only thing that cleanses this mind right here. That's right. Because the mind is desperately wicked. Give me that. <laughs> Je Jeremiah 17 and 9. We got to cleanse this right here. Okay. You you can't you can't think that you can do it on your own. You got to do it through the Bible. That's right. The Spirit of Christ. Okay, that's the only way to cleanse your mind. That's the only way to get your mind right. But a lot of our people love being in wickedness. That's right. They love being evil. Sisters love getting on Facebook and twerking. That's right. Cussing each other out, acting a fool. That's that's what our people love to do because your mind is wicked as hell. That's right. Read what you got. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 9. Come on. The heart is des deceitful above all things. It says what? The heart is deceitful above all things. Now hold that. We got to prove what the heart is. Give me uh, Mark 7, 21. Give me that. Because it says that the heart is deceitful above all things. What is the heart referring to? Come on. It's the book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Because your heart doesn't think for you. That's right. Right? It's just a vessel that pumps blood. Okay? Read. For from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men. Come on. Pre proceed evil thoughts. Proceed what? Evil thoughts. So does your heart think for you? <laughs> No, that's your mind thinks for you. That's right. So it says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Meaning what? Your heart in the Bible is referring to your mind. That's right. Your mind. Your heart don't think for you. Your mind does. That's right. Now go back to uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 9. Come on. The heart 
is deceitful above all things. The heart, meaning your mind, is deceitful. It lies to you. It tells you that sin is pleasurable. That's right. Okay, that's why people love to commit sin. Because your mind is telling you that it feels good. That's right. Sex outside of marriage, that feels good. That's right. Right? Your mind is telling you to be wicked. That's why it says your heart, meaning your mind, is deceitful. Come on. And desperately wicked. And what? Desperately wicked. No, just just normally wicked. Desperately wicked. Uh-huh. Who can know it? Who can know it but the Lord? <laughs> The Bible says your mind is wicked as hell. That's right. Okay. That's why Christ said, go back to Jer uh, John 7, 17 and 19. That's why Christ said this. Okay. So we got to understand that the only way to get cleansed is through the Bible, through the truth. That's right. That. right. And for their sake. I sanctify myself uh -huh. that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Through the truth. Cleanse your mind. Got to be cleansed through God's laws. That's right. Because brothers, how long have brothers been shaving their beard off? Okay? You never, we never knew about we had to grow our beard out until we read God's law. That's right. Right? We never knew that you could... Brothers should be shaving their head bald like Charles Barkley and, and <laughs> Shaq Jordan. and Michael Jordan, Tyrese and all these brothers. That's right. The Bible says that's sin. That's right. Okay? Sisters should be wearing blonde weave in their head. That's, that's sin. Right. That's Sisters right. should be wearing pants. That's sin. That's right. Okay? We never knew these things, right? That's why we read in Peter that sometimes you do it out of ignorance. Okay? But that's why you got to be taught. Be cleansed through the truth. Okay, read on. Neither pray I for these alone, uh -huh. but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Through, the, through their word, come on. That they all may be one. That they all may be one, all 12 tribes, come on. As thou, Father, art in me, uh -huh. and I in thee. As the Father is in Christ, and Christ is in the Father. All 12 tribes need to be as one. Right, because what have we been taught? That the Hispanics are not our brothers. That's right. The Native Americans are not our brothers and sisters. That's right. Okay, but Christ said we all need to be as one as him and the Father are as one. Come on. That they also may be one in us. That they also may be one in us. Come on. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Read. Really? And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. And the glory which, which the Father has given Christ, Christ said, I have given them. Come on. That they may be one, even as we are one. That they what? May be one, even as we are one. You see that? That means one mind, one accord, one spirit. That's right. Okay? That's how all 12 tribes need to be. That's right. Okay, so that means what? We are set apart nation. We holy. We have to be together holy as a nation. Okay? There shall be no divisions. Read on. I in them uh -huh. and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. You see, they may be perfect in one. How do we be perfect in one? Okay? Give me Psalms 19 um, and 7. How do we be perfect in one? Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. He said that thou may be perfect in one. Let's read how we're supposed to be perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. What's perfect? The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. That's what the law does. It changes the soul, right? It converts you from being wicked to now righteous. That's right. That's what the laws of God do, okay? Come on. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It makes the wise Okay, those that were simple as hell, now you wise. That's right. By doing what? Keeping the law that's perfect. That's right. That's why I said the testimonies are sure. It's not going to fail you. That's right. You keep these law statutes and commandments, you definitely going to be a wise brother or sister. That's right. That's our wisdom. Okay, let's go back. Read verse uh, John 17 and 22 again. 
book of John, chapter 17 and verse 22. Uh -huh. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, uh -huh. that they may be one, even as we are one. By keeping the law makes us perfect. Read. I in them uh -huh. and thou in me, that they may be perfect that they may be made perfect in one. Right, it says that they may be made perfect in one, okay? We have to be made perfect. We have to be purified, right? We have to go through trials, tribulations, purge out that old man, that's purge right. out that old woman by keeping the law that's perfect. That's Come on. Right. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them. As thou have loved me. You see, Christ said he only loved them, the Israelites, as Christ, as the Father has loved Christ. Okay? Again, we that peculiar nation. That's right. We that set apart nation. Christ only loves the 12 tribes. That's right. That's why he said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. That's plain. Okay? Now give me 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Read that. It's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them. What the Bible says? Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Come on. And be ye separate. Be, be what? Be ye separate. That means be severed. That's the same thing as being severed. That's right. From the nations. Like, like we read in Leviticus 20 and 26. Okay, he says, be ye separate, severed, holy, set apart, peculiar. That's right. Understand that. Read it again. Wherefore, come out from among them uh -huh. and be ye separate. Be ye separate, Israel. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch what? Touch not the unclean thing. You know, it's a lot of things that's unclean in America. That's right. Homosexuality is unclean. That's right. Lesbianism, that's unclean. That's right. Okay, celebrating uh, New Year's and, and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Halloween. That's unclean. That's Mother's right. Day is unclean. Bring it Father's up. Day, that's Bring unclean. Memorial Day, Labor's Day, that's unclean. That's right. That's not in the Bible. Okay? New Year's, that's not in the Bible. That's unclean. Right? Fourth of July, that's unclean. That's right. Okay? All the unclean foods that y'all love to eat. Okay? That's yep. unclean. Okay? Your, your kids being disrespectful, wicked as hell. That's unclean. That's right. Understand. So the Bible says, read it again. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. Meaning, also doctors and philosophies we've been taught. That's right. Right? That's the unclean thing. Come on. And I will receive you. And he says, once you don't touch the unclean thing, he says... Then I will receive you as my children. We read that. And I will go ahead. Uh, and, and I will receive you. Uh-huh. And will be a father unto you. He says, now I'm going to be a father unto you. Come on. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Come says on. the Lord Almighty. Okay, so we got to understand the Bible telling us to come out from among them. Okay? Everything we've been taught in this world, we've been taught all lies. That's right. We've been taught that we African American. We've been taught that we black. We've been taught that we Negroes. That's right. We walk around calling ourselves thugs and all of that, right? Sisters walk around calling themselves bad chicks, right? Uh, goddesses. Man. That's not in the Bible. That's right. Okay? We, we Israelite, the men are Israelite kings. You sisters is like princesses. That's right. That's it. I understand. Now let's go to uh, 1 Kings 11. Here's a major, <laughs> here's one of those major sins that our people commit. This is one of the unclean things. Right, yep. The book of 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 1. Come on. But King Solomon loved many strange women. So this is going to King Solomon, right? He was king over all Israel for 40 years. He reigned on the earth. Read it again. But King Solomon 
loved many strange women. Strange women, right? King Solomon loved many strange women. Let's read who some of those strange women are. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh, uh -huh. women from of the Moabites. So he, he said he loved the, the daughters of Pharaoh, the Egyptians, right? Then he said women of who? The Moabites. The Moabites, right? Because today, that's your so-called Chinese, right? Come on. The Ammonites. The Ammonites. Uh, Af I mean, uh, okay. the Japanese, right? So-called Japanese today. Come on. Edomites. The Edomites. All right, that's the so-called white man today, so-called white woman today. Read on. Zidonians. Zidonians, right? That's your uh, Africans, come on. And the Hittites. And the more African nations, right? So this is who Solomon, right, he started to deal with strange women outside of his nation. But let's see what happened. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. This is a law that he told to the children of Israel, the Lord, right? Read. Ye shall not. You shall what? Not. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. We, we, when you read this, you got to understand that this is a law. When the Bible says ye shall not, that's not an option. That's right. Okay. Like the Bible says thou shall not kill. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the law right here. Read again. Ye shall not go into them. He says, ye shall not go into them, the other nations outside of the children of Israel. Come on. Neither shall they come in unto you. Come on. For surely they will turn away your heart after their God. It says, for what? Surely they shall they will turn away your heart after their gods. Does it say maybe? Surely. They will turn away your hearts away after their God. You see, because when, when brothers start to marry outside of their nation, what do they start to do? Okay, you you going from now, you, you, you probably could have been, okay, I'm a Christian. But now, I knew Jesus was black, but I'm still going to go to the, uh, the, 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 what, Catholic what, the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and worship white Jesus. That's right. Okay. A Lutheran church, <laughs> okay? We all know that those are not our God, okay? So when you go outside of your nation, the Bible says they're going to turn you away from serving the one true God. That's right. Okay? Read that again. You shall what? Ye sh you for, for they, for you should, neither shall, shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Uh -huh. Solomon on. claimed unto these in love. You see, Solomon claimed unto these women in love. Okay, so the Bible tells us that we should not be dealing outside of our nation. We should not be dating or marrying outside of the 12 tribes. That's right? right. We bless so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. We got 12 tribes to choose from. Okay, the Bible says we're supp not supposed to be marrying the other nations. That's right. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Let's, let's go a little further with that. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. What does the Bible say? Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Now, we shouldn't be making marriages with the other nations. Read. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his sons. So you're not supposed to be giving your daughters away unto the other nation's sons. Come on. Nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Read. For they will turn away they, thy son from following me. Read. That they may serve other gods. That they may what? Serve other gods. You're going to definitely serve other gods when you go outside of your nation. Come on. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. The anger of the Lord is going to be kindled against you when you serve in those other gods. Because you got to realize if you go outside of your nation and you, you dating a so-called white woman, right? And you telling her that Christ is a black man, you think mm. she's going to agree with that? You think she's going to serve you as a king that you are? That's right. No. Okay? Only the Israelite woman can appreciate you. That's right. Understand that. So the Bible says that you go out, you, you go outside of your nation, you're gonna turn, they're gonna turn your heart away from God, and then God's wrath, his 
His anger is going to be kindled against you. Come on. And destroy thee suddenly. And what? Destroy thee suddenly. You see? God said he's going to kill you for that. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's what the Bible says. When he said destroy you suddenly, that don't mean tell you to go in the corner. Right? That, that means death and destruction to you. That's that right. means that's sin right there. And we all know what the ways of sin is, right? That's right. Death. The ways of sin is death. All Christians know that. Give me uh, Psalm 78. Give me Psalm 78. And I want, let's start at verse 1. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. Come on. Give ear. Oh, my people, uh -huh. to my law. To what? To my law. The Bible says, God says, give ear my people unto my law. Read. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. This is God's mouth right here. The Holy Bible. This is God's mouth. Come on. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, uh -huh. which... Which ye have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Read. We will not hide them from their children. Uh huh. Showing to showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. So that's what we're supposed to be doing: showing our children, right, how to keep these laws and the wonderful works of the Lord. Come on. For he hath established a testimony in Jacob. In Jacob. There we go again. Jacob, the, tw the, the father of the 12 tribes. Come on. And appointed a law in Israel. And appointed a law in all nations. In Israel. In all nations. In, in Israel. You see that? He appointed a law in Israel. Come on. Which he commanded our fathers. He Go ahead. That they should make them known to their children. Right, because we don't only want us to get the kingdom. We want our children to get the kingdom as well. That's right. Okay, we got to teach them how to obey God's law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, because that's the problem, what's not being taught. That's why we have the younger generation out here reckless. That's right. Right? They stealing cars. They killing each other. Right? All they know is, is getting drunk, smoking weed, popping pills. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. So we got to teach our children these laws. Teach them that we are that uh, nation that's above all people. That's right. We're not supposed to be doing what other nations do. Right? We're not supposed to be following after our former lusts. That's right. Okay? Read on. That the generation to come might know them. The laws that the generation to come might know God's law. Commandments. But what? But keep his commandments. That's the point. Okay? We all got to learn how to fear God and keep the commandments, okay? That's the whole duty of man. That's right. That's why you put here on earth is to fear God and keep his commandments. Now, give me Psalm 147. Give me Psalm 147 and 19. Let's get more into these law, statutes, and commandments, okay? Because uh, a lot of people think that the laws was given to all nations. Right? Let's read this. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his word, the Bible, to Jacob. Come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. So his statutes, right, and the judgments for breaking those law, statutes, and commandments, he only gave them, he only showed them to the Israelites. That's right. Okay, we read about the judgments in Deuteronomy 28. That's right. The, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 through 68. Okay, those are the judgments for breaking God's laws. He only showed those to the Israelites. That's right. Okay, come on. He has not dealt so with any nation. Yeah, what? Not dealt so with any nation. You see that? It says he has not dealt so with any other nation. That's right. Come on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And for what? His judgments, they have not known them. Just read on. Praise ye the Lord. All praise to the Most High God for that thing. That's right. Okay? They have not known God's judgments. They never went into slavery on slave ships, That's had right. yokes of iron around their neck. Their kids were sold on auction slave Bring blocks. 
They don't know nothing about that. They didn't have to go through that. They don't know God's judgments. <laughs> That's right. Okay? Cursing the city, cursing the field. They don't know nothing about that. That's right. Those That's judgments right. was only given to the Israelites. And we got to thank God for those judgments. That's right. Because we keep the commandments and the faith in Christ, we can get out of those judgments. That's right. Okay? That's what it means to be redeemed, saved. Through who? Jesus the Christ. That's the right. black Messiah. That's right. Not that... Uh, False white image that devil the Bible speaks of. Give me Deuteronomy 4 now. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. We're going to go a little further with these laws. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Behold, I have taught you statutes and, and judgment. You see, remember, he said that. The book of Deuteronomy was only written to the Israelites, right? To all Israel, okay? So going back to this, this Deuteronomy chapter 4, he says what now? Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Moses said, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Come on. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. So the Lord God commanded Moses to teach the children of Israel his commandments. Come on. That ye should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. So you got to keep these laws in the land wherever you go. Read on. Keep therefore and do them. No, keep therefore and just believe and don't do no laws. Keep therefore and do them. You see, you said keep therefore and do them. Okay? Don't just read them and say, oh, I'll do it on a later date. No, he says, keep therefore and do them, meaning now. Make haste to do it. Hurry up and do it. That's right. Okay, read it again. Keep therefore and do them. Uh-huh. For this is your wisdom. Read. And your understanding in the sight of the nations. You see, he said, this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. So when the nations see us applying God's laws amongst our nation, they say, now that is a wise and understanding people. That's right. Okay? Not in our wickedness, but in righteousness. That's right. Meaning what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's right. Don't be holding grudges against your people. Okay? That's wisdom. And when the nations see that, okay, they say, that's the kind of nation we could probably follow. That's right. That's the nation we're going to follow. Not uh, pulling out in the middle of traffic, turkey. No, that that's not that's not a wise and understanding people. Take it out. Okay, not gunning your brother down, emptying the whole clip on him. That's right. That's not you. That's not a wise and understanding people. That's right. Okay, the Bible says that when we apply these laws to our life, that's wisdom in the sight of the nations. Okay, come on. Keep, keep read. Uh, read it again from the top. Keep therefore and do them, uh -huh. for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, uh -huh. which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see? So surely we are a great and understanding people when we keep God's laws. That's what makes us set apart because the other nations weren't given God's laws to keep. That's right. Okay. Now, let's get, uh, let's go to Romans 9. Let's start in verse 1. Let's go a little further with these laws. Because that's what makes us a peculiar people. That's what makes us set apart. That's what makes us holy. These law, statutes, and commandments. Which our people hate to keep. That's right. Come on. Right, yeah, it's the book of Romans, chapter nine and verse one. Mm -hmm. I say the truth in Christ; I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. So Paul is speaking here, right? This is Paul speaking. Okay, come on. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, mm -hmm. for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. So Paul said, "I wish that I could be accursed for Christ." For my nation. Come on. My kinsmen. My kinsmen. According to the flesh. According to spiritual Israel. According to the flesh. So ain't no spiritual Israel in the Bible. That's right. That kills that notion right there. 
He said, according to the flesh. And Paul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. Okay, today, Paul would be a so-called Jamaican. That's right. Okay, he was from the tribe of Benjamin. Read on. Who are Israelites? What, is the, what does it say? Who are Israelites? That's Paul brethren. <laughs> That's his kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites? Watch this. To whom pertaineth the adoption? To whom pertaineth the adoption. That's, that's what adoption pertains to, the Israelites. Give me Galatians 4. Hold that. Give me Galatians 4 and 4. It's the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. Uh -huh. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. We're talking about Jesus the Christ. To redeem them that were under the law, uh -huh. that we might receive the adoption of sons. That we what? Might receive the adoption of sons. So that's who the adoption is for. To redeem them that were under the law. That's right. Who was under the law? The children of Israel. That's right. Okay, let's go back to Romans 9. Four again. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? So the adoption only pertains to the Israelites. Read on. And the glory. And the glory. What's the glory? Give me Psalms 145 and 11. What's the glory? We read everything that pertains to you so-called blacks and Native <laughs> Americans today. That's right. Book of Psalms, chapter 145 and uh, verse 11. Mm -hmm. They they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. They shall what? They they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. Come on. And talk of thy power. And what? And talk of thy power. So the glory is talking about what? The kingdom. That's right. Okay, that only pertains to the Israelites. That's right. Let's go back to Romans 9. Let's go back to Romans 9. Who are Israelites, uh -huh. to whom pertaineth the adoption uh -huh. and the glory. And so the adoption, meaning Christ dying on the cross to redeem them that were under the law, pertains to Israel. Then it says, and the glory, meaning the kingdom, only pertains to Israel. Come on. And the covenant. And the covenant, meaning what? The old and the new covenant. That's right. Give me Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. Uh huh. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. Let's see who the old and the new covenant is for. For finding fault with them, finding fault with the Israelites, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, uh -huh. when I will make a new covenant. He's going to make a what? A new covenant uh -huh. with the house of Israel. With who? With the house of Israel. With all nations. With the house of Israel. Uh huh. And with the house of Judah. With the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Meaning northern kingdom, southern kingdom. That's right. Okay. That's who the old and the new testament is for. It's not for all nations. That's right. Understand that thing. So let's go back. Read uh, 94 again. Who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenant. And the covenants, the old and the new pertains to Israel, read. And the giving of the law. We read who the law was given to, right? Psalm 78 and 5, Psalm 147 and 19 and 20. Tells you the law was given to Israel. Come on. And the service of God. And what? And the service of God. Give me uh, Isaiah 44 and 1. Give me Isaiah 44 and 1. Read that. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Jacob, my servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen. And who? And Israel, whom I have chosen. So we are the servants of God. Okay, so the servants do what? We provide the service of God's knowledge to our people. That's right. Okay, go back. And the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. And the promises through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, that's who the promises is for. Read off. 
whose are the fathers and of whom as a uh, uh, concerning the flesh. Uh, concerning who? Concerning the flesh. Uh huh. Christ came. You see, that's who Christ came for. The Israelites. That's right. <laughs> okay, read on. Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Read on. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. It says they are not of Israel, which are of Israel. Meaning what? You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Y'all the Israelites. That's right. But if you don't keep these law, statutes, and commandments in the faith in Christ, you are not an Israelite. That's right. Because the true Israelites keep God's laws. That's right. You might be a you might be a Jew by blood, okay? But just because you're a Jew by blood, that don't mean the kingdom is for you. That's right. You ain't applying what this Bible say. Lake of fire is waiting for you. Lake of fire is waiting for if you don't repent and keep these commandments. Bring it out. Okay, so now, even though you're an Israelite, God says that'll make you an Israelite. Because you ain't applying what the Bible say. Read. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Read. Are they all children? Uh-huh. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. It says, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Because everybody, they, all nations like to say, I come from the seed of Abraham, right? <laughs> but it just said, read that again. And neither, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Right, neither, just because you come from the seed of Abraham, that'll make you a child of God. Okay, that's what that's telling you. Read on. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right, in Isaac. Who did Isaac have? Jacob. That's Who did right. Jacob have? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. That's what Paul is telling us here. Come on. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. They which are the children of the flesh. Come on. These are not the children of God. It says what? These are not the children of God. So all nations ain't the children of God then. That's right. That's what the Bible say. Read that again. That is... They which are the children of the flesh, uh -huh. these are not the children of God. So all nations can't be the children of God. That's what the Bible say. Read on. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the promise are counted for the seed. Who did, we, who, who did the Bible just say in verse 4 that the promises were for? The Israelites. That's right. The Israelites. Now watch this. Get Galatians chapter 4. Let's go back there. But now we're going to read in verse 22. Because it said, That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Right? So who are the children of the flesh? Let's read that. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh -huh. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Abraham had two sons. Come on. The one by the bondmaid. The one by the bondmaid. That was Hagar. Right? That was the bond made, Hagar, right? Come on. The other by a free woman. Meaning who? Sarah, right? That's the free woman, Sarah. Come on. But he who was of the bond woman. So he that was of the bond woman, meaning Ishmael. Was, okay, hold on. Hagar had Ishmael. Come on. Was born after the flesh. Who was born after the flesh? Hagar, I mean uh, Ishmael. That's right. Okay, read on. But he of the free woman was by promise. But he of the free woman was what? By promise. Oh, so so all children are not God's children. That's right. Okay, that's how you read the Bible, precept upon precept. Now watch this. Jump to verse twenty-eight. It's gonna get. It's gonna say plain for you. Verse 28. Uh huh. Now, no, now we brethren. Now we brethren. As Isaac was. Are the children of promise. Mm. I can just drop the mic and say <laughs> shalom. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Understand that all children are not God's children. That's right. Okay. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go back to uh, Romans. Let's read that verse 8 again. Book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 8. Uh huh. That is... They which are the children of the flesh. The children of the flesh, right? Through Hagar had Ishmael. Okay, that's the children of the flesh. Read. These are not the children of God. They are not the children of God. Come on. 
but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. You see? But the children of the promise, who is through who? Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. <laughs> That's who the promises is for. Okay, not all nations. So we got to come out of these ways that we have been taught. Okay, everything that we've been taught is a lie. Okay, that's why the Bible calls this, excuse me, Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots. That's right. And fornication. Okay, this land is nothing but confusion. That's right. Okay, that's why the Bible says, come out from her, be ye separate. Because he has severed us. All right, let's get Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 119, and let's start at verse 100. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 100. Uh -huh. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. You see? Okay, you have a lot of our people young today in the truth. We understand more than our mothers, our fathers. Why? Because we keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Now we have wisdom. Now we're not simple as hell no more. That's right. Because we apply the wisdom from this Bible. That's right. So the Bible says, read it again. I understand more be than the ancients uh -huh. because I keep thy precepts. Come on. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. So every evil way that America has taught us. We got we to gotta unlearn that thing. We got to shed that evil off. Okay, through what? God's laws. That's right. Come on. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me uh -huh. how sweet are thy words unto my taste. This says how sweet are God's uh, laws to our taste. Come on. Yea, sweeter than money to my mouth. Read. Through, through thy precepts, I get understanding. The Bible says, how do we get the understanding? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Uh -huh. Therefore, I hate every false way. So through the precepts, that's how you get the understanding. Okay? That's how you get the understanding of what this Bible says. That's how you unlock the mysteries. That's right. But you can't do that if, if you ain't keeping God's laws. That's right. Because he ain't going to give you that wisdom to do so. Okay, and therefore, we hate every false way. That's right. We hate everything that America pushes. Okay, because this is what has our people destroyed today. Mainly up. the Christian church. That's right. Okay, that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. The Christian church. Okay, read on. The, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. The word of God is what? A lamp unto my feet. Uh-huh. And a light unto my path. Because this world is full of darkness. That's right. And the Israelites, when we read in Isaiah 60, it tells you that we are in gross darkness. That's right. This world is full of darkness, and the Israelites that keep God's laws, we are that light to our people, right? We are that example of what God's laws look like. Because we keep this on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. We don't just apply it when we feel like it. That's right. No, we fear God, so therefore, we keep God's laws. That's right. Okay, that's what it means to honor and respect the Heavenly Father. Read what you got. I have sworn, and I will keep, I, and I will perform it. it. It says, I have sworn, and I will what? Perform it. Perform it, meaning do it. Come on. That I will keep thy righteous judgment. Read on. I am afflicted very much. I am afflicted very much. Come on. Quicken me. Change me. Convert me. Come on. O Lord, according according unto thy word. According to the Bible. Read. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, uh -huh. O Lord, and teach me thy judgment. Read. My soul is continually in my hand. The Bible says what? My soul is continually in my hand. So your soul, your, your interest into the kingdom is where? In my hand. Right, because you got a choice. You got a choice. You can either stop fornicating or keep fornicating. That's right. You can stop smoking the weed and cigarettes or... Uh, put it away, right? You can stop watching the porn or keep watching the porn, okay? That's the, your soul is in your hands. You're in control of that. 
Okay, come on. Yet do I not forget thy law. It says what? Yet do I not forget thy law. You see, so you can't, if you if you fear God, you would never forget his law. That's right. Okay, because you know that your soul, your interest into God's kingdom, that's in your hands. That's right. So never forget God's laws. Read on. The wicked have laid a snare for me. What has America done? The wicked has laid a snare for me. You see, America has laid a trap for our people. Okay? The prison system, that's a trap for our people. That's right. Okay? The slums and the ghettos, that's why they call it a trap. Because <laughs> that's what it is. It's a trap for our people. Bring it up. Right? All of these wicked ways, they, they let our people open up clubs, bars, strip clubs, that's all snares and traps for our people, okay? The Bible says, read it again. The wicked have laid a snare for me. The wicked, meaning who? The so-called white man today. That's right. He sets up the way this world is right now, okay? The wicked have laid a trap, a snare for me. Come on. Yet I err not from thy precepts. It says what? Yet I err not from thy precepts. You see, the Bible says, even though that the wicked laid that trap for me, the Israelites that fear God, we not going to err away from what this Bible says. That's right. Okay, we're going to apply it to our everyday lives. That's right. We're going to build up our nation. Right? We're going to teach our people that God only honors marriage, not boyfriend and girlfriend. That's right. Right? We're going to build up our households. Us men, we're going to get our households back in order. That's right. We ain't going to have our wives talking to us recklessly. Hang it out. Right? Calling us B.A. niggas. You understand that? That's, that's what this Bible does. That's it right. It teaches men how to be men once again. It teaches us how to be kings, gods of the earth. Hang it out. Okay? That's what this Bible does when you apply it to your life. Okay, read that again. The wicked have laid snares for me. Come on. Yet I err not from thy precepts. It says, I err not from God's precepts. Read. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Bible just gave us another precept of what the heritage is. Read that again. <laughs> Thy testimony. God's testimonies in this Bible, come on. Have I taken as an heritage forever. You see that? That's our heritage. Every law that's written in this Bible, that's your heritage. Our people think their heritage is Christmas. That's not That's not your heritage. That's right. That's the white man's holiday. That's right. Thanksgiving is the white man holiday. That's right. You celebrate your birthday. The white man told you to do that. That's right. Okay. This is our heritage, God's testimonies. Read that again. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. Forever, meaning even to this day, right now. Okay, come on. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. Uh-huh. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always. Even when? Even unto the end. Even unto the end. Okay, so we got to understand that we got to come out of the ways of America. That's all right? right. This is what we should re be rejoicing in. This Bible, keeping God's commandments. Okay, showing your people that there's a way out. Because that's what our people is looking for. They're looking for solutions, but they don't have the righteous men and women to teach them. That's so right. now in these last days, God is building up the Israelites. That's right. He's building up our nation. He's showing us the ticket to the kingdom. This right here, the Holy Bible, this is the roadmap to the kingdom. That's right. You want to get the kingdom? You want to live forever? You want to have eternal life? You want to rule over all nations? You want to feel you want to know what it feels like to actually be a ruler, right? You gotta, you gotta keep these commandments. That's right. Okay, let's close out with Daniel seven. Daniel seven. And read verse eighteen. It's the book of Daniel, chapter seven and verse eighteen. Uh huh. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So it says. Read it again. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The saints are the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's today. right. 
We are the saints according to the Bible. All nations are not the saints. But it says the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Okay, we're not waiting to for the kingdom to be given to us. That's right. We're going to take the kingdom. That's right. Okay, understand that. Read. And possess the kingdom forever. Uh-huh. And even forever and ever. Meaning eternal life. That's <laughs> right. Okay, we're going we to take the kingdom and possess it forever. Forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever? <laughs> That's right. That's right, forever. <laughs> That's right. Okay, jump to 27 now. Let's close out with this. Verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven, the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, come on, shall be given to the people of the saints. The people of the saints, come on, of the most high, read, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It's a what? Everlasting kingdom. Uh-huh. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. You see that? All dominions, everybody going to serve and obey the Most High God. That's right. And this kingdom is going to last forever. That's right. Okay, so if you want to be a part of that thing, you got to repent, keep the commandments and the faith in Christ, the Black Messiah. That's right. Okay? This another episode of Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth with the lines of Zion. Shalom. Most High Christ bless. Wow.